We're always on the lookout for high quality sculpture and we're delighted to include a number of fine examples in our May auction in Johannesburg, including this one on my right. This is of course Sidney Kumalo's iconic landmark bronze of St. Francis of Assisi. It was conceived in 1962 and it remains perhaps his most familiar and recognizable works. I think a lot of us associate Kumalo's work with anthropomorphic figures, but early on in his career, his most important initial commissions from the late 1950s through to the early 1960s uh, were very much dominated uh, by religious themes. There's so many things I would love to say about this work. It is fabulous on, on so many levels, but perhaps stylistically, the main point I'd like to make is the remarkable way that Kumala was able to conflate religious iconography with an African aesthetic. If you look, for instance, at the wonderful squared off toes and bear in mind uh, West African carved sculpture, I think that point really hits home. Also look at this sort of mask-like, African mask-like face of the saint's head. I absolutely love this very angular, abstract dove that is being clasped very gently uh, to the saint's belly. Also, of course, the major compositional device, uh, this outstretched arm pointing heavenwards, naturally, but also referencing the Amandla salute. As always, there is a political edge to so many of Kumalo's best works. We are delighted to be handling this work by Dumeli Feni. Now, Dumeli Feni bronzes are exceedingly rare. To have one that predates his exile in 1968 is rarer still. This work called Anguish Woman was produced either late in 1967 or early in 1968, as I said, very shortly before the artist left the country, going first to London and thereafter New York. I absolutely love the figure's sorrowful, arm and eyes. It is a figure filled with pathos. Um, it is a work that of course references the horrific social injustices of the mid to late 1960s. This fabulous spindly bronze figure is by Edouard de Villa. It's an early work from 1953 and it was produced in a very small edition. When you look at a work like this, so abstracted and curvilinear, and think about some of his later examples, vast, hard-edged, tubular, you get a sense of just how innovative and experimental an artist um, Villa was. I also don't think it would be out of place to compare a work like this to the fabulous Mapocha works by Alexis Prella, also included um, in our upcoming sale, particularly when you think about the abstraction of the figure, the triangular element of the figure, and these wonderful, small, simplified heads. I absolutely love the work of Lynn Chadwick. He was, of course, one of the dominant forces of 20th century British modernism. This particular example is so wonderfully tactile. I love the different surface comparisons uh, one can pick up on. Look at these lovely ribs and striations on the male figure and compare it to these beautifully polished square and triangular faces. A work like this might seem out of place in a South African context, but Lynn Chadwick, along with some other uh, British contemporaries, were enormously influential on South African sculpture, particularly through the Goodman Gallery on the likes of Sidney Kumalo and Ezram Lechai and we're delighted to have such a, a fabulous example uh, coming up in our May sale.